Hi there, my name is Potboss and welcome to a new video. And in this video we will be, will be playing Foundation. It's an early access game you can get on Steam. And well, there's a new update out. You can see all the things that's new right here. I'm not going to go through them. We're just going to load up a new game and play around with it. So we're going to play on the Fluvial map with all these small rivers. I will start up the game. And well, quickly enough. We will be starting to play. So here's the begin screen where you can already see the cute help screen. And well, if you want to know more about the game and all the things you can do in it, just read all those. We're not going to do that, we're just going to play around. Now first things first, we need a starting area. And you can see all these cute hexagons. And those are the starting positions, starting positions that are available. Now. All starting positions need wood, you need berries, and you need some stone. So, for instance, this area could be a good setting up starting area. But, well, I like to be close to the river, because, well, in the river there's some fish swimming around, and I want to play with that. There's a lot of flat land here, which is really nice. We can build a really big village there. There are these rock formations, with my, which might hold some nice resources and well there's plenty of expansion options right here so I'm thinking about starting well this area because this is also some free land so we can really build on now the game the way this game works is pretty easy but you get quests especially in the beginning and that will just guide you through what you have to do so there's a log some minerals are there so later on we will be uh, searching for those minerals but right now we can just follow the quest so we go to the building screen and we have to build a village center that's all that we can build right now so we just basically this is some sort of a city square so we're going to build it well just in the middle of our hexagon and there we are a nice square city square eight people around it we have eight people living in our tiny nation and we have a new quest. We have to build a builder's workshop. That's a new thing from the update. In the previous version of the game you had to just assign people to be builders. And now we can actually make a builder's workshop. I'm going to put it right there on the border. Start construction. This one is finished immediately. And now we can assign builders to it. Just hit that plus icon and we have now three builders. Well, we have a new quest, or at least a quest should come in, to build a lumber camp. And that is exactly what we are going to do. We need all those wood things coming down, so let's build a lumber camp. Now you did see the red circle. That's where all the noise from the lumber camps is re a really a problem for people if they want to live there. So your main industries you will want to put somewhere outside of your village so later on we'll probably be moving a bit of the industries because well you don't want to live next to a guy chopping wood all the time so there's our builder he's picked up the resources going to the building site and he will start building so we'll just have to wait and see I'm going to speed it up a little bit speed 2 and there we see he is actually doing a nice job building He's a nicely bearded guy, putting together, and there it is, our wood chopper. Now, that's done, now we have to assign wood cutters. Now, here's a screen, just click the little people screen there, you can see all your villagers. I like to arrange them by job, so the ones with a job are on top, and the ones unemployed are always at the bottom. And we can see there's three people. Now, I already showed you, if you click this plus button, it will assign a villager. You can also just click here, there's a selection of all the jobs available and you can do a woodcutter. So now we have two woodcutters, two people will start to cut wood. Oh, no they won't, because in this game you can tell them where they can work and where they can't work by painting development zones. Now we want them to extract some trees, so we just tell them, well in this zone you are allowed to extract trees. You can always remove a zone if you want to. If you use the left mouse button you can paint the area and they will start working there. If you do the right mouse button it will go away again. 
really easy. Now, of course, I have been playing this a bit. We also need to make the berries a gathering zone and the stone in order for our later developments. Because, well, next thing is we have to produce berries. Well, if you hold, hover your mouse over the gathering hut, you can see that it will produce berries. So let's build a gathering hut right here next to the berries. Now, a worker will go there, clear it from trees, and then they will start working on it. So there's wood being gathered, our builders are going forth, back and forth through their hut, and then they will start working on this site. Now I can tell you we will also be needing stone, so we're not gonna just play by all the quests, we're gonna speed it up a little bit. So I'm gonna build a stone quarry here. Now you can see the red circle again, it's very close to the city center. So for now I'm going to put it right there, and they're just gonna build and we're gonna assign miners and they will bring in the stones. But of course later in the game when we expand we will move that away from the city center to this pile of stones for instance or some somewhere else there should be more piles of stones yeah right there so the people living in our city won't get bothered by it and they will be more happy which is quite nice actually you should get happy citizens now if you start to plan ahead one of the things you can do is for instance already tell these two people well you will become foragers so as soon as this hut is done they will start working there we also need a miner to mine stone and that's how we have just um, put the jobs around now i think since we won't be doing too much building at the same time once this one is done I will also assign one of the builders to be a miner, so stones will come in a little bit more quick. Well, let's hope he is finishing this building. And, well, this can't be finished because it doesn't have the tools. Still have to be brought there. Yes, our gathering hut is done, and you will see, for now, they can't find a workplace. Now they will. It's just the miner now that can't get a working place. Now, they will start to produce berries. Now, the thing is, then the berries will be in the hut and you need a place to put the berries, which is basically your granary. It will store all the food. So, we're going to build a granary next to it, so our transporter guy doesn't have to walk that far. And I'm going to get one builder and turn it into a miner because we need stones and we're not producing stones well they started to produce stones right now and we need a lot more so I want more miners that's one of the challenges in the beginning of the game you have only eight people to do all the work so you have to distribute them very wisely across all your jobs later on when all the basics are set up new immigrants will come in and you can assign more people to the d different jobs which is actually very nice uh, but until then you just have to wait and I'm going to speed it up again. Let's get time going. Make sure they finish the buildings and can get to the part where new villagers will be coming in. Although that will take a little while. Now, the granary is being built and as soon as that is done, we still need a place to sell our berries, which you do in a marketplace. So we will be building a marketplace. I'll put it around the square, that's where the people gather anyway. And just a reminder, the white dot, that's where the one attending the market is. And at the green dots, people can stand and buy stuff. So that's why I'm going to build it like that. Now a builder will get the materials and make the marketplace. And one of the other things, if you click a guy, you can see it needs primary needs, which is water and food, in this case berries. So we still have to get a way to find water. Well, that's pretty easy. You just have to build a well. It provides water to the villages, villagers. So I'm going to build a well. I'm going to place it right there. Also need stone, but that's fine. And yeah, he's bringing in the stone for the granary, which is good. So when the granary is done, we have to assign one of our people to transport the berries from the gathering hut to the granary. We need someone to attend the market. 
and well the well the people operate themselves and then we have fulfilled all the basic needs of our people and we can see what happens then we have a building complete which is the granary now we just have to tell them what they can store here well in this case they can store berries that's fine we need to find a villager in this case the forager and tell him to be a transporter he will be transporting the berries there he goes and as you can see there's already 26 berries in which is quite nice So, there's the quest we need to build. A well, a well, a market, and sell berries. Well, same with the granary. We have to tell them what to sell in the market. In this case, berries, because we've built a food stall. And now we need a market tender. And I think this miner can be a very good market tender. So, yeah, there he goes. Move out to the market. Now we have to make our people happy and you can see here they have zero happiness. They're not happy at all because they don't have food and they don't have drinks. But as soon as the well is done and well there are berries to be sold. We will see this number go up. There it goes. People bought food and that made them happy. Now we have to make everyone very happy as you can see this is fulfilled. It's all green. So he's happy now because he has food. Well William is bringing the stones. Now let's hope he finishes the well and we can make all our villagers happy. Yes, very good. Well, as you can see, we have a lot of money going to use later on. Don't spend all your money in the beginning because it's hard raising money in the beginning and you need money to erect all your buildings. It's very tempting to just spend it all right now on buying a new piece of land or whatever, but that's usually not the best idea. Our quest is complete, we have a hundred happiness and now immigration will start. And that means that every seven days immigrants will pass by and decide whether they want to join. Not everyone will join, in this case two people passed by and two decided to join. It can also be that two people pass by and none will join or only one. Or just one people comes by. And later on in the game, if you get a little bit bigger, then it can even be four people passing by. And, well, they might join all four, or, well, maybe none of them, or just a selected number of them. You have no influence over that, other than keep your villagers happy. The happier they are, the higher the chance immigrants will come in to fulfill your jobs. So, yeah, that's what you have to keep an eye on. And a new villager arrived, and you can see him here. They're all unemployed so we need to give them a job that's what I like this screen for the work job list because now I can just say well I need one for foraging I need a extra miner you just click on them and now you can see they have a job and they will go there which is really easy I really like this screen the kingdom recognizes your efforts in establishing your settlement so the king is happy with us and we get points for that that's really nice I'm going to show you in a minute what we do with those points for now, we need to give our people housing, because as you can see, they lack housing. Same thing with zoning, but now we have to make residential zones. And how does it work? Well, we will paint the area. I will pause for a second. We can just paint the area where we think, well, there they can build houses. That's fine by me. Which basically will be this area for now. Not too close to the market, because I'm want to be able to expand the market and in this area people will start building their houses at least they will lay the foundations and then the builders will come and actually make the houses so that's a good thing to keep in mind you can't place the housing yourself so I will start time again and pretty soon we should see uh, yeah there's the first one there's the foundations William is bringing the stuff and then he will build a house there's another one and you could already see the red zones that's non-desirable land. If we remove that stone cutter later on, this land will be more desirable. As you can see, closer to the market and the city square, there's high desirability. And if you go further, you will get lower. So, they all want to live close to the city center. And there are buildings and statues you can get that will actually make them even more happy to live around those buildings. So perhaps if you build a church here, that will make the desirability of the whole area higher they will really like to live there so you have options to raise the desirability either by removing uh, production facilities 
or making buildings there that they will use and need for instance a church or your own house your lord's manor they will really like it that it's there and well speaking of our lord's manor we have to start building a place for ourselves a nice little living quarters and i'm thinking that our lord manor should be built somewhere here and i'm going to just put it like this so we can expand it later on and well i'm going to build a little add-on which we can use as a treasury so we can store more money we need to have a door of course and well let's start construction that's the start of our own little mansion now of course oh there's one more people coming in very nice you could be really tempted to immediately build a very big house but as you can see um, just a core construction that big house costs us six gold coins a week and the bigger house you build the more money it costs and with only a few villagers available yet you don't have the money to support all that so just start off slow because in the future you can just edit it so we can like add new buildings to it add new parts raise them uh, erase them you can do anything but that's really not the issue so just make sure that you get all the basic things you need don't waste resources yet on all the beautifications and stuff you can do that later on for now it's just wise to get your city going and well talking about getting our city going there's our new villager put them to work straight away and I think we might be needing another builder first because well there's houses to be built there's our Lord Manor to be built I want to start working on a church anytime soon so yeah we have a lot of building to be done so we need those builders now if I check this you can see we need planks and we don't have planks so we have to find a way to get planks and one of the ways to do that is to get a sawmill so we will be building a sawmill close to our uh, logging camp of course because that's where the wood is so just right there let's start building it and you can see just placing it costs a hundred gold coins that's why I haven't spent all my coins because I want those coins for these kind of buildings now let's set up if you press this button this will prioritize this building so will they will focus their efforts on this building and only if this building is already being built by someone they will go to other buildings so hopefully this will help finish this building rather quickly Okay, and one of the other buildings we need, that's when we get to the estates, to the splendor, is a warehouse. And you can unlock a very broad range of new buildings. Uh, you have to collect points for that, and you need to meet some additional uh, things for your uh, people. So, if we check our people, we have 8 serfs and 3 newcomers. And we need 10 serfs in order to unlock these. And of course we need the points. I'm going to go into that later. Explaining how you can get those points. But for now we have unlocked the warehouse. And I'm going to build a warehouse. Because all the goods, for instance the woodcutter provides, we have to store somewhere. And well, one of the places we will be doing that is in a warehouse. So let's build one. Now of course you did see the big red circle, that's not too good. So later on we will be building new ones, but for now this will do fine. Just need to make money and we need to get our city going. There are our two new villagers, so let's get a forager and a woodcutter. And perhaps we should get a... change the forager into a carpenter. So because the carpenter uses also wood to make planks, I really like three woodcutters so we can get in enough wood for all the buildings that we were doing and we have enough wood for the planks. If you don't have enough woodcutters it might be the case that at some point you run out of wood because the wood, the sawmill is using everything and that's not all we want. But it's starting to produce now. So our Lord Manor should be built rather quickly. This is also looking good. So basically, 
we mostly need just a few more villagers to keep everyone happy and do all the jobs. And in the near future, especially when we can unlock a trade route, get a free territory. And I really like a free territory because we can use it to move some of our industries already. Probably not, probably we'll wait for that a bit. But we can also use it for new buildings. We don't have too many right now to be building, but our Lord Manor is done and we start promoting people, for instance, we make newcomers into serfs, they will unlock new buildings. And, well, we need room for that. And this is already quite occupied. So perhaps anytime soon I will be spending some money on a new territory. That could be the case. Not sure yet, but it could be just like that. Now this looks good. Just need a few more resources, nine to be precise, and then our Lord Manor will be done. Can't wait for that to happen. Now, as you can see, this game is going at a good pace, especially in the beginning. You can just speed it up every now and then. Later on, you will probably slow it down a bit, because, well, there's a lot to be done. And just to keep up with everything, that could be a good one. We have a new villager, and I'm strongly thinking put it in the sawmill, so we can get more planks, because we really need them. And I think we should start focusing on building a church. So let's do so. Because, well, with the church you have to put in the foundations first. And really make a big building from it. So we can just put our efforts in that while the rest of the village is still progressing. As you can see, I've made a core building. I've put up a tower. Now, I don't like it that small, so we'll raise the tower a bit. And we have to put in a door. People can enter the church, which is kind of obvious, but you still have to do that. And, well, it's nicely placed. A little bit from the square, which is good. So I really like this. So, yeah, let's start working on our church. Now, our Lord Manor is done. All we have to do now is assign functions to the different parts. And one of the things we need is a great hall. This is where we can promote our villagers. And tell them, well, you can be of a higher social status, which is really important. I also want a treasury, so we can save up more money, which is also very nice. So that's done. And we can edit this building in the future, make it bigger, so we can hold more money. Or just give it different functions. Now, that mission is done. All we need to do now is promote someone. That will happen always on the first day of a new month. So we'll have to wait a few more days. Oh, two more people coming in. Very nice. And then we can promote people, and, well, that will complete that mission. A warehouse being built, really nice. Just need two more planks. Which I hope it will get quickly. And then we can really start storing some stuff. Well, as you can see, this one is getting bigger and bigger because we get more villagers. And in a while, well, you just have to scroll down all the time to see everything. Ooh, there's two new villagers coming in. Perfect, what should they do? Well, I want enough berries, so I'll probably make one a forager. And we need one in the warehouse since it's done, so we'll assign a new transporter. Now, same with the granary. We have to tell them what they can store here. In this case, wood, uh, tools, uh, the planks they are making, and stone. That's what they can store right here, and Lauren will pick that all up and put it in. There you see, 50 wood. Very good. That's nice. So now they will start to store all the stuff. And as you can see, the sawmill guy just picks up the wood there, goes back. So that's really nice. You can see our church being built. It appears that the door is already done. But, well, what we need to do is set up a trade route. Because we need to start trading. We have only 9 tools. We need 10 more, I believe, for our church. Yes, so we don't have enough. Our church can't be completed. So that's a resource we have to buy. Now, in order to do that, we need to trade. And up here, there's a trade icon. It's the, this one, the little cart. And to unlock a trade route to a neighboring city, in this case, Nordbury, 
need 20 planks. So as soon as we have 20 planks, I will unlock the trade route and then I can set up trade so I can tell them what to buy, what to sell. We can see already here that they are selling uh, quite a few things. Also tools, which is good because we need them. But they will also buy berries from us and even planks if we have enough. So that's really nice. And promotions are available, which is really nice. So we can promote people now. Um, these are all newcomers and we can promote them to serfs, which is really nice. Uh, they will It will increase their needs. So for instance, they will need... Uh, church and they will need a place to live but we are building the church they can build a place to live themselves so we can really do that now later on in the game it can be wise to not promote everyone because if you promote them and they for instance need clothes or something and you don't have clothes yet don't uh, promote everyone just promote one or two villagers and first make the production line for clothes and after you have clothes you can promote the rest because otherwise they might get unhappy and unhappy villagers might just leave your village which is not too smart every now and then all right they are all promoted so we should see some new houses coming up or they will just upgrade these ones that's also an option all right now they're mostly just very busy with the church which also needs quite a few planks so I think it will be a while before we have the 20 planks we need. But we'll see. As soon as we have the 20 planks, this number will turn green. We can click it. And we have set up a trade route. Yeah, there all the planks are gone. They're moving them all to the church, which is fine. They just need three more, so that's good. And the core can be built completely, since they have everything now. So we'll just have to... Wait with the small tower before that can be completed. A new villager is coming in, that's nice. Well, already eight planks being made. Ten, so that's good. We really need a lot of planks. I think we should expand this extraction zone a bit more. We don't want him to run out of trees to cut down. And later on... We will be building a reforester that will plant new trees for us to cut, but not around our city square. We will do that elsewhere. So hopefully soon we can get an extra piece of land. I think we can rather quickly. So yeah. Oh, we have one unemployed. Well, let's make it a miner. We need extra stones because we are out of stone. And we have the 20 planks, so I will click that. Now we have a trade route enabled. Now let's check. I'll pause the game for a second. Now here's all the resources there are, and you can trade them. They're standardly set to no trade, so there will be no trade with this. Now we need tools, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say buy this until the inventory number is reached. And we'll put that number up to 10. So we won't buy too many at a time, because they're very costly. Cost us a lot of money. And we will start to sell berries, but well... We need quite a few for ourselves, so I will put this number up to 75. So everything above 75 we will sell. And I will do the same with planks, put that number up to 50. So if we really have enough planks, like 60 planks, then we can sell 10. That's basically how that works. So now we have set up the trade route, and we have unlocked a free territory. Which is very nice, I'm going to unlock uh, this piece of land. Why, you might ask? Well, for instance, I like it that there's a big forest here. To make this bigger, if you hold the control button on your keyboard and you use the mouse wheel, you can make it bigger or smaller. Let's set up extraction zones here. So now they can just chop down all these trees, uh, which are closer to their uh, lumber camp, which saves time, which makes us gives us more wood. And in the future, we'll probably be putting these buildings all up here, away from the city center. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now let's see, because we need money for a trade guy to come by. There he is. Here he is. There's a little trader. You can s just follow him. And he will go to the warehouse and sell us some tools, uh, which probably puts us in the red zone in terms of income, but that's fine because we have saved quite a bit of money. 
Let's speed it up a bit. There he goes. He will put in 10 tools. There they are. We have now 10 tools. We lost quite a bit of money, but that's fine. She have to pay for them. And now we can finish our church, which is... Oh, very nice. Yep, yeah, church is done. And the clergy is happy with that. So we get clergy points. And if we go check, here are those points. We now have 10 clergy points. We still need 10 serfs. And if we have them, we can unlock new pieces. Which is really nice. We have a new villager. Well... Let's assign it a job. And I think we can use an extra miner again. Now, keep an eye out on your church because, well, it can only hold 20 people. And we already almost have 20 people. So, probably quite soon we will be expanding the church to make it hold more people. But for now, this is all just fine. And I think we have set up the basics of our tiny little city. We have a few houses. We have a house of our own. We have food and wood and stone set up. And we are ready to start expanding a bit more. And, well, this is a good moment to end this first episode. In the next episode, we will try to expand, set up new production lines, and see if we can grow our city from the 18 people are, that are in there now to, I don't know, maybe 30, 40. Who's to say? I really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hope to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.